it's time to review Ratchet and Clank for the PlayStation 2. Ratchet and Clank was developed by Insomniac Games after they finished with the Spyro the Dragon trilogy. And yes, I know loads of people at this point are going to ask me, why did they stop making Spyro games? Well, one of the main reasons was, according to the CEO of Insomniac Ted Poli, was that they didn't know what else to do with the character. He said that, among other things, Sparrow couldn't even hold a gun due to not having hands. I mean, well, that does explain why there are other playable characters in Year of the Dragon. Russian Thine takes place in the Solana Galaxy and on the planet Kortu. A small robot is created and sees the video contents of an infobot, which horrifies him. He tries to get away on a spaceship, but crash lands on a planet Velden, where he's found by a Lombax named Ratchet. The robot shows Ratchet the info button, and we found uh, and we find out that Supreme Executive Chairman Drek has a bit of a problem. You see, the planets that his species, the Blarg, live on, keep getting over polluted to the point of being completely uninhabitable. So Drek has a solution. He's going to make a new world made out of pieces from other worlds. However, those planets will lose their balance, drift off wildly, where they collide into the sun and explode into a massive ball of gas. The robot decides to find the help of the Ratchet and Clank's version of Dragon Ball's Mr. Satan, Captain Quark. And Ratchet wants to go to space anyways, but lacks the robot ignition system needed for his ship. Conveniently, the little robot has that component, and they set into space with Ratchet naming the robot Clank, since the robot's actual name is... Ratchet and Clank is a 3D platform, but with a big difference. You can use your weapons to kill enemies. The X button jumps, square button attacks enemies with the Omni Wrench, a mainstay in the series. The circle attacks your enemies with whatever weapon is equipped. Holding triangle lets you choose your weapon or gadget from the quick select menu. Holding R1 allows you to crouch, and you can activate a first person view by holding L1. At the beginning of the game, you only have the Omni Wrench and the Bomb Glove, but you can buy more weapons at Gadgetron vendors, but you'll need nuts and bolts to pay for them and their ammo. Thankfully, you earn bolts when you destroy boxes and kill enemies. Which I find a bit weird, since this happens with even organic enemies. God, imagine if your life was like that. Your objective in the game is to find the infobot in the level, which will show you a video and give you coordinates to the planet the video took place on. In order to get certain infobots, you'll need gadgets, which you'll find throughout the levels, or will have to buy from certain characters. Some of these gadgets include the slingshot, grime boots, hydro splicer, and more. Also, there are golden bolts hidden throughout the level, which you can use to buy golden weapons in challenge mode, which are a lot more powerful, but you'll need a hell of a lot of nuts and bolts to buy them. Also, you can occasionally take control of Clank and can use Doombots to do your bidding by holding the triangle button and choosing attack, wait, follow, or enter, which are pretty self-explanatory. Now, one of the first complaints I have with Ratchet and Clank, even when I was a kid, was the massive amount of pointless weapons. I mean, when did you ever use weapons like the Walloper, the Decoy Glove, or the Tesla Club? It's made even worse by the fact that you have to spend a lot of bolts to buy these weapons and their ammo. If you actually do have the game when I complete it, let me tell you what weapons you'll be able to complete the game with. The Bomb Glove, the Blaster, the Glove of Doom, the Suck Cannon, and the Devastator. Get those and you'll be just fine. And while I'm on the subject of spending bolts, let's take a look at the pointless Gadgeton PDA. It is convenient, but the price is multiplied by a hell of a lot. For example, one round for your blaster costs one bolt in a vendor. However, on the PDA, it costs a hundred bolts. Why? Another annoyance I have is that the arguments between Ratchet and Clank at the halfway point get really grating after a while. Yes, I know, actual character development in a 3D platform, ooh, big deal. It gets really annoying after a while, I'm sorry, but it just does. Another problem I have is that the checkpoints are actually very sparse, and if you die, you could be sent back to the beginning of the level occasionally, and you and even worse, you don't get your ammo back. That is just stupid. However, the worst thing about the game are the puzzles with the lockbreaker. I just downright hate these puzzles due to being so frustrating and trying to get all of the things filled in. Seriously, I'm so grateful they never appeared in the series ever again. In any case, I still think Ratchet and Clank is a fun game. The animation for the game is really good, particularly in the cutscenes, and I thought there were a few good jokes, especially when Ratchet jokingly acts like a dick towards Clank in some of the levels. The level design for its time was very inventive, and it's still good. I remember how as a kid my mind was blown when I saw Ratchet walking on walls with the magnet boots. It's also pretty fun to blow up tanks with the Doombots, and the Devastator is very useful since it can track enemies from far away, which helps a lot later on in the game. However, my favorite parts of the game were the jet fighter sections, which were just simply awesome and very fun to play. Man, I just wish you could have played them more than once. 
Ratchet and Clank is a fun game with awesome jet fighter sections, mind blowing level design, fun gameplay, and great animation. But it's let down by sparse checkpoints, pointless weapons, and terrible puzzles. In any case, I give Ratchet and Clank a Jack and Daxter, meaning that it's a pretty good game. And in case you're wondering, no, I am not going to do a comparison between Ratchet and Clank and Jack and Daxter. I like them both equally. Well, until I play Jack and Daxter again, then we'll see how that turns out. Either way, see you for my next review.